accept fraternity, that we do not uh, that we do not train researchers on how to systematically identify research gaps as a basis for their investigation. This continues to be a common problem with novice researchers. Little theory and research has been developed on identifying research gaps basis for a line of inquiry. When working with doctoral students, this concept of addressing a gap in the prior research seems to be foreign to them. The idea of finding gaps in the research has been troubling for most researchers, most particularly doctoral students. For a considerable period of time, there were no formal or established framework for identifying or characterizing research gaps. It appears that identifying research gaps is in the eye of the beholder. One researcher's gap may be another's research, another researcher's non-gap. Most of these conflicts with the research gaps tend to touch on perception. Many researchers may argue that a gap is one thing or it is not. It is still a struggle for most researchers, especially doctoral researchers, to identify and define gaps in their studies. This chapter will introduce the seven types of research gaps. See figure 5.1. Yeah. So can we, can we look at this figure for a while? Just let us give it a few, a few minutes. And these are the seven research gaps. Because I keep tell, talking about gaps and then objectives. Your objectives will be aligned to the gaps of the study. So can you take us through that flow diagram? Okay. Hmm. The first gap is, okay, seven research gap. The first one is population gap. The second one, we have empirical gap. The third one, methodology gap. The fourth one, knowledge gap. The fifth one, theoretical gap. The sixth one, evidence gap. And lastly, we have gap. Yeah, so I would like some of you, or all of you, to start to ask, what type of gap is my study carrying? And uh, we are going to go into details here in each of those gaps. But many of you are chasing after knowledge gap. And some are, to, are chasing the empirical gap. I would like to see studies of some of you looking at the methodology gap. The methodology. If, if most studies were quantitative, can you opt for a qualitative study or a mixed method study? If the studies did not collect data from adolescents, but instead collected data from their parents on reproductive sexual health, can you, in your methodology, collect data from the adolescents themselves?
the theoretical gap. Can you go counter to the theories in the papers that you are reading as part of your literature review and bring forth a theory that explains the phenomenon in a different way? That is a gap for study. So, Jen, Kanyari, are you there? Yes, Prof, I'm here. Yeah, please carry on with the reading. Okay, Prof, thank you. So, theoretical foundation and development. This theoretical model was developed from two important articles by two researchers who did an outstanding job of building a taxonomy of research gaps. The first known article that developed a framework for defining research gaps was by Robinson et al, 2011. In their model, they identified and described five types of research gaps. A, population gap, B, intervention gap, C, comparison, D, outcomes, and E, setting. Muller, Block, and Kranz, 2014, developed a research gap model that itself was developed from Robinson et al's 2011 framework. Their theoretical framework was developed after exhaustive research on the conducting of literature reviews and was based on Jacob's 2011 theory on research problems. Jacobs 2011 identified six kinds of research problem. These problems, parallel research gaps are discussed by Muller Block and Kranz 2014. While research problems are not necessarily research gaps, they might be synonymous with research gaps. Their framework consists of six types of research gap, A, contradictory evidence, B, knowledge void, C, action knowledge conflict, D, methodological, E, evaluation void, and F, theory application void by Muller, Block, and Kranz 2014. We found the frameworks proposed by Muller, Block, and Kranz 2014 and Robinson et al. 2011 to be significant theoretical developments on research gaps. Building on you... the foundation. Mm. Sorry. Building mm. on the foundation of these two theories, mm. we developed a theoretical framework that is an am amalgamation of the two theories and did two things. First, the new framework is a mixture of the two frameworks, but only uses one construct from mm -hmm. Robinson et al's 2011 model. Second, we reconceptualized the model developed from Muller Block and Kranz 2014 by simplifying the names of the constructs in their proposed framework. Miles 2017 proposed a new model built on the two previous models that consists Please, please mute. Please scroll, scroll up, Prof. Uh, we're having a problem. Can we mute? Uh, try reading again. We found. Okay. All right. We found the frameworks proposed by Muller, Block, and Kranz 2014 and Robison et al. 2011 to be significant theoretical developments on research gaps. Building on foundation of these two theories, we developed a theoretical framework that is an amalgamation of the two theories and did two things. First, the new framework is a mixture of the two frameworks, but only uses one construct from Robinson et al.'s 2011 model. Second, we, 
We reconceptualized the model developed from Muller Block and Kratz 2014 by simplifying the names of the constraints in their proposed framework. Miles 2017 proposed a new model built on the two previous models that consists of seven core research gaps, renamed and ranked from the most common to the least common. A. Yes. Yeah, so, so just pause. Okay. So this is all I want you to learn. I was just giving the theory on how we arrived at this, but what you should learn is that there are seven. Principally, there are seven research gaps. Those ones. So go through them. So A, population gap. B, empirical gap. C, methodological gap. D, knowledge gap. E, theoretical gap. F, evidence and G, practical knowledge gap. Should I continue? Yeah, continue. Okay. The seven research gaps from most common to least common. Another prevailing issue with research gaps is being aware of the most common to the least common. Many doctoral students are not aware that some gaps are more common than others. To help the readers of this book, we have strategically ranked the most common research gaps to the least common. Okay, pause there. Brenda Kinyi, are you there? Yes, I'm present, Prof. Yeah, uh, talk to us about the population gap and think about your topic. What gap are you chasing? Yes. Okay. Uh, should I read? Or, yeah. um, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Population gap. This gap concerns um, a focus on a population that is under researched or not adequately represented in prior research, e.g., gender, race, or ethnicity, age, etc. A population gap is the most common gap recognized by researchers. Should I continue? Yeah. Characteristics, very common gap. A population gap is the most common gap recognized by researchers. Under-reserved population, sorry, underserved population, there are always underserved populations that have been under-researched. This gap addresses a population that is under-researched or not adequately presented in the evidence base or prior research. Miles 2021, Robinson et al. 2011. Empirical gap. This gap is concerned with research findings in prior research that lack empirical research or a subject matter that needs to be evaluated or empirically verified. An empirical gap deals with gaps in prior research. This conflict deals with the research findings or, or propositions that need to be evaluated or empirically verified. Yeah, Correct. so this is, this is the gap most of you are chasing when you develop in your context of the problem statement. You look at studies which have covered these studies that have covered this, but no studies have covered this area. That is the empirical gap. Carry on. Continue reading. This is characteristics. Common gap. An empirical gap is the second most common gap recognized by researchers. Conflict with poor findings. This gap deals with the research findings or propositions that need to be evaluated or empirically verified. Lack of an empirical line of inquiry. For example, the empirical gap often addresses conflict that no study to date has directly attempted to evaluate a subject or topic using an empirical approach. Miles 2017, 2021, Jacobs. 
Methodological gap. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I think she's lost. Uh, Sam Nebera, can you take over methodological gap? Yes, Prof, definitely. Methodological yeah. gap. This gap is the type of gap that deals with the lack of variation in research methods in prior research that could use a different line of inquiry. Jacobs 2011, Muller Block and Kranz 2014, Miles 2017. A methodological gap is the type of gap that deals with the conflict that occurs due to the influence of methodology on research results. Characteristics. Yes. The common gap, a methodological gap is the third most common gap recognized by researchers. Conflict with the prior research methods this gap addresses the conflicts with the research methods in prior studies and offers a new line of research that is divergent from those research methods. Variation. A variation in research methods is necessary to generate new insights or to avoid distorted findings. A new line of inquiry. For the researcher, it might be useful to vary research methods, especially if certain research topics have been mainly explored using a singular or common research methodology. Miles 2021. Okay, pause. This methodological gap has to deal with methods. And, and just, just give me a minute again, please be patient because I'm trying to collect material from elsewhere. Um, Just uh, give me a minute. I just want to amplify this meaning so that we are all clear about uh, these differences. Um, recall this, those ones who were in my class, recall this, uh, this problem we call this tobacco smoking i want to show you a methodological gap so um Nyabela, are you there i'm there sir yeah do you see these deficiencies in evidence yes you see that yeah I, I want you to, to use that for us to see a methodological gap. Uh, there we are. Just, just read that deficiency in evidence. Okay. Deficiencies in evidence. Existing studies of adolescent tobacco use are primarily quantitative with a focus on outcomes and trans-theoretical models. Palonen, 1998. Qualitative investigations, however, provide detailed views of students in their own words, complex analysis of multiple perspectives and specific school contexts of different high schools that shape student experiences with tobacco. Cresswell in press. Moreover, qualitative inquiry offers the opportunity to involve high school students as co-researchers 
a data collection procedure that can enhance the validity of student views uncontaminated by adult perspectives. Carry on, the audience. The audience. By examining these multiple school contexts, Using qualitative approaches and involving students as co-researchers, we can better understand the conceptions and misconceptions adolescents hold about tobacco use in high schools. With this understanding, researchers can better isolate variables and develop models about smoking behavior. Adm administrators and the teachers can plan interventions to prevent or change attitudes towards smoking, and school officials and assist with smoking cessation or intervention programs. Yeah. This is, everybody, this is an example of a methodological gap. Because existing studies were quantitative. They were quantitative. Existing studies were quantitative. But now, this person is indicating that he's going to use qualitative investigations and he has given the reason. That's what I'm saying. Uh, keep that in mind, that you can actually do a study that is chasing, is exploiting a methodological gap. If we go back, If you go back and uh, share the screen. If you go back and share the screen. If we go back and share this screen where we are reading, I, I want you, uh, Nebera, just to go back and we emphasize methodological gap. Now that we have looked at an example, let's repeat that. I will. Uh, methodological gap. This gap is the type of gap that deals with the lack of variation in research methods in prior research that could use a different line of inquiry. Jacobs 2011, Muller Block, and Kranz 2014, Miles 2017. A methodological gap is the type of gap that deals with the conflict that occurs due to the influence of methodology on research results. Characteristic, common gap. A methodological gap is the third most common gap recognized by researchers. Conflict with prior research methods, this gap addresses the conflicts with research methods in prior studies and offers a new line of research that is divergent from those research methods. Variation. A variation in research methods is necessary to generate new insights or to avoid distorted findings. New line of inquiry. For the researcher, it might be useful to vary research methods, especially if certain research topics have been mainly explored using a singular or common research methodology. Miles 2021. Thank you. Very good reading. So you can see a methodological gap. I, I can, if I had time, we can pull out an empirical gap. We can also look at a population gap. And uh, we can also look at a knowledge gap. Let me just let me just give me a minute. Let me look for a study to emphasize this because it's so important that we get this right. Jen, I know you're cutting. Just give me a minute. And that's why I would want my students to be able to argue out 
very fiercely their gap. What type of gap are they dealing with? So um, before I give you this other example, uh, Jen, can you add your hand is up? Yes, Prof. Yes. Mm, thank you. I appreciate uh, the insight you've given us on research gaps. I'm actually trying to now uh, get out of the quagmire I've been for a long time. Yes. Now, my question is, can one study have more than one research gaps? Yes. You can use, choose to have more than one research gap, but my advice is once you get a gap, can you look at the issues that you'll create objectives around so as to address that gap? But yes, you can. Uh, let me share this. And I think for continuity, we'll use the same reader. Um, look at this uh, this problem. And we are, we are just looking at the gap. So we're not looking at the problem statement, but the, at the gap itself. Um, so I think uh, going better just for continuity, can you can you go on? And I want you to where? tell me what kind of gap where it says previous research. Okay. Previous research, sorry, previous research on communication and malaria control. By the way, by the way, this study was uh, the title was improving effective use of communication in malaria control in Uganda, a case of the Stop Malaria Project. That's, that's the, we're using communication to mitigate, I mean, to enhance malaria control in Uganda. Okay, so read from there. Okay, I, 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 I start again. Yeah. Previous research on communication and malaria control examined the question of community perceptions, knowledge and practice regarding malaria control and prevention, noting the pressing need for effective communication to impact people's knowledge and practice. For example, Mbonye et al. 2006, uh, Zabagazani et al. 2007, Nuwaha 2002. Other studies that considered communication and malaria control, for example, Dan 2004, Henrik and Tony 2007, Yomuhendo uh, 2004, Nakiwala 2007, Okaka 2009, established that there was over-reliance on a single strategy, mass information and limited use of participatory communication. Many of these studies associated the average success of malaria interventions to this. Unfortunately, Far fewer studies have questioned this inadequate use of communication in malaria control. While information increases awareness, participatory approaches motivate and maintain behavior change besides directly engaging communities in tackling social problems. Nephalopoulos 2008, Sparks 2007, such as malaria. Okay. Carry on. Thus, Investigations into this issue will provide firm ground for improving the practice of communication in malaria control through engendering knowledge on the challenges to effective use of communication. With this understanding, policymakers can design better strategies to, to promote effective use of communication in malaria control. Implementers of malaria interventions can plan on addressing key hindrances to effective use of communication in and for malaria control and health communication scholars can better understand the mechanisms that influence effective use of communication in interventions that are characteristically similar to those of malaria. Yeah. So you see, I would be asking you, what type of gap is this person chasing? And note, 
E sem... Uh, that uh, many of these studies associated the average success of malaria to this intervention. Unfortunately, far fewer studies have questioned this inadequate use of communication in malaria control. While information increases awareness, participatory approaches motivate and maintain behavior changes, directly engaging communities in social problems such as malaria. This is the point of dispassion. So, so this, this person, obviously, this is not a methodological gap. No, that has nothing to do with methodology. This has to do with practical knowledge. So if we stop this sharing and we go to our, we go to our work. If we share this, You see, and uh, you come and look at the empirical gap. That study is chasing an empirical gap. An empirical gap deals with gaps in prior research. This conflict deals with the research findings or propositions that need to be evaluated or empirically verified. It can be seen as an empirical gap. But I want you to note that it can also be seen as a knowledge gap. This one. This gap is concerned with the lack of research on a particular subject, on a particular approach to malaria control. Thus, the desired research findings do not exist, and the knowledge gap is a common gap in prior research. There are two situations where a knowledge gap might occur. I'm trying to push you a little hard to appreciate what type of gap are you going to chase? Is it a population gap? Is it an empirical gap? Is it a methodological gap? Is it a knowledge gap? And is it a theoretical gap? And uh, this one I would like, um, I don't know whether, Brenda King, are you online? Yes, I am. Yeah, please uh, take us through this uh, theoretical gap. How many of you will be daring to look for a theoretical gap? Go ahead. All right. Can I ask a question before Brenda? Go ahead. Go ahead. The knowledge reading uh, is concerned with the lack of research on a particular subject, thus the desired research findings do not exist. Uh, when you are seeking to to add more knowledge, to add more uh, information to the existing uh, information, doesn't it then become knowledge gap? You will rationalize it. Okay, sir. I'm trying to develop your yes, mind yes. so that you can, you can argue out, eh? just like you are now doing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Good. Theoretical okay. gap. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, theoretical gap. This gap is concerned with the lack of theory or on or conceptual or theoretical models for a particular subject matter in prior research. Because there is a lack of theory, a gap exists. Jacobs 2011. Muller, Bloch, and Kranz, 2014, Miles, 2017. 
The theoretical gap deals with gaps in the theory in prior research. Characteristics. Common gap. The theoretical gap is the fifth most common gap in prior research. Lack of theory, for example, if one phenomenon is being explained through various theoretical models, then similar to a methodolo uh, methodological conflict, there might be a theoretical conflict. Examine just the theory. Pause. Just, just pause there, my dear, just pause there. Okay. okay. If one phenomenon is being explained through various theoretical models, then similar to methodological conflict, there might be a theoretical conflict. Be aware. And I hope you understand my English. Be aware of running after many theoretical models because they can create conflict. Carry on. Examine the theory. Researchers and scholars could examine whether one of the theories is superior in terms of the gap in prior research. Common occurrence. Theoretical gaps are a common occurrence when examining prior research on a phenomenon. Miles 2021. Okay. Evidence gap. No, no, just wait, pause. I want to tell the class that if you are doing a phenomenon like poverty, there are many theories. One can decide reading two, two works, one can decide whether one of the theories is superior in terms of the gap. Which theory is more comprehensive? A phenomenon like poverty, a phenomenon like racism, a phenomenon like uh, cultural inhibitions or retrogressive, re retrogressive practices, a, phenom a phenomenon like democratization in the third world. A, phenom a phenomenon like uh, religion, indoctrination, for example. You'll find many theories, and you can actually do a whole study on the theoretical gap that is given. Carry on. Evidence gap. This gap is concerned with contradictions in the findings of prior research. There are conflicts in prior studies that have contradictory results and conclusions. Jacobs 2011, Muller Block and Kranz 2014, Miles 2017. Characteristics, somewhat common gap. An evidence gap is somewhat common compared to its counterparts. However, it is recognized by researchers and does exist in prior research. Evidence conflict. An evidence gap occurs when a pro provocative exception arises, when new research finding contradicts widely accepted conclusions. Contradiction. This occurs if results. Sorry. Contradiction. Okay. Contradiction. This occurs if results from studies allow for conclusions in, in their own right, but these results are contradictory when examined from a more abstract point of view. Analyze the research stream. The identification of contradictory evidence starts with analyzing each research stream. Analyze the results. The results from this analysis, analysis need to be synthesized in order to reveal contradictory evidence. Miles yeah. 2021. Yeah, and note, note that this is not common at uh, in most studies, because it is very difficult. Contradictions in the findings of prior, prior research. So what is common is number one, population gap. Number two, empirical gap. Number three, methodological gap. And uh, most studies stop at the knowledge gap. 
theoretical gap i want i would love to hear that i would love to see that but it's not common and then evidence gap is even more more acute uh, so uh, finally read for us the same reader uh the practical knowledge gap practical knowledge gap this gap is concerned with professional behavior or practices that deviate from research findings or are not covered by research by research jacobs 2021 2011 sorry muller block and kranz 2014 miles 2017 Characteristics, and common gap. A practical knowledge gap is not a common gap compared to its counterparts. However, yes. it is however, it is recognized by researchers and does does exist in prior research. Yeah, I think uh, it would be unfair for me to subject you to learn about practical knowledge gap. It is it is a high level thinking. So uh, why don't you worry about these gaps, these ones? Uh, let's come here. What about the population gap, the empirical gap, the methodological gap, the knowledge gap, and uh, if you are ambitious, the theoretical gap? Uh, these others become pretty complicated at this level. Osanya? Comment? Good evening, Prof. Good evening. I'm just wondering loudly between a research topic and a research gap, which one comes first? The research topic comes first. You get it? Yes. The research topic comes first. And then... And I know what you're asking. As you think about it, you are immediately looking at the issues. And as you look at the issues, the literature will tell you which gap is becoming obvious around which you will uh, design your objectives. So you must have an area of study and then you begin to look for gaps. And I'm hoping that people are beginning to realize, but these gaps actually relate to the issues around which I'm going to craft objectives in after my problem statement. Think about that. I want us to move, because I want to look at case studies a little more this evening. I want us to move to, to this one. And uh, I, writing up the research gaps in a research proposal, to discuss the gaps in prior research, you must first highlight some of the prior research in the literature. Please mute your speakers. To discuss the gaps in prior research, you must first highlight some of the prior research in the literature that does not address the particular focus of the research. Remember those four studies. And I hope you're you are getting this. You must first highlight some of the prior research in the literature that does not address the particular focus of the research. Those are the, the four studies I talked about. The contribution noted should relate back to the gaps in consistencies and controversies noted earlier. So look at this example. Identify the research gap. Number one, previous research has addressed several aspects of and you bring up those studies, hey, those studies, please mute your speakers. You bring up those studies. Okay. 
that must first highlight some, some of the prior research in the literature that does not address the particular focus of the research. Hi, uh, the who is controlling this? Dr. Maka, who is controlling this? What is this? We will not understand this with these interruptions. Regina, kindly mute. I think she can't hear. But both you are the host, you can mute her. Okay. To discuss the gaps, and please follow me very keenly. In prior research, you must first highlight some of the prior research in the literature that does not address the particular focus of the research. And we have seen this in the tobacco case. Many studies dealt with this, dealt with this, dealt with that, but around cessation of smoking. We have seen that in the malaria study. Many studies dealt with communication and messaging, and you are, address, you are, you are citing them. The contributions noted should relate back to the gaps inconsistencies and controversies noted earlier. Now look at this. Identify the research gap. Previous research has addressed several aspects of tobacco smoking cessation. Cite two or three relevant articles. So the, this previous research has, has addressed these aspects has addressed number two, this aspect, cite two or three relevant articles. And number three, cite two or three relevant articles. Because if I don't get this through, I'll have failed miserably. So allow me to go back to this. Look at this. Look at this. And I would like uh, Francis Ochami, are you online? If not, Frank Ochana. Yes, Prof, I am, but I've just left the office. I beg your indulgence. Okay, so Frank Ochana, Helen G, are you there? Jenny Amisi? Yes, I'm there, Prof. Please help, help us out. Read this evidence justifying the research problem. It's very important for us to see. And I'm picking a problem statement you will see that in the problem statement, there are more studies. But in our introduction to the background of the problem, you will cite, remember we said about four plus three maximum. Now let's listen to this. Evidence justifying research problem. Context. Previous research on adolescent tobacco use has focused on four primary topics. Several studies have examined the question of the initi initiation of smoking by young, by young people, yeah. noting that tobacco use initiation begins as early as junior high school, e.g. Heishman et al., 1997. Other studies have focused on the prevention 
of smoking and tobacco use in schools. This research has led to numerous school-based prevention programs and intervention, e.g. Sussman, Dent, Burton, Stacy, and Flay, 1995. Pure studies have examined quit attempts or cessation of smoking behaviors among adolescents, a distinct contrast to the extensive investigation into adult cessation attempts. Heshman et al, 1997. Of interest as well to researchers, studying adolescent tobacco use has been the social context and social influence of smoking. Here now, Chassin and Presson, 1998. For example, adolescent smoking may occur in work-related situations, at home where one or more parents or caretakers smoke, at teen social events, or at areas designated as safe smoking places near high schools. McVie et al. Uh, in press. Minimal research attention has been directed toward the social context of high schools as a site for examining adolescent tobacco use. During high school, students form peer groups which may contribute to adolescent smoking. Often peers become a strong social influence for behavior in general and belonging to an athletic team. A music group or the grunge crowd can impact thinking about smoking. McVie et al. in press. Schools are also placed where adolescents spend most of their day. Pipkins, 1993. And are available research subjects. Schools provide a setting for teachers and administrators to be role models for abstaining from tobacco use and enforcing policies about tobacco use. O'Hara et al., 1999. Very good. Are you seeing, class, are you seeing that all these studies before the red are around smoking cessation, smoking in others, social influence on smoking, and smoking at home, ETC. And then this person now goes to, 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 to focus on where the study will be, the purpose. Remember, the purpose must have the, the location. You can begin to sense that this person is taking us into a school and is going to talk about adolescence. But... All these studies, all these studies here, developing the context, are talking about tobacco smoking, cessation, uh, uh, the youth, the elder people. But it is not talking about, in this study, it is not talking about what this, this study will be about. This study will be about methodological gap. So he's saying these studies were all existing studies of adolescent tobacco use are primarily quantitative with a focus on outcomes and transtheoretical models. Qualitative investigations, however, provide. So he's leading us into his gap of the study. Uh, Othello, just one minute. So that's why... When we come here, that's why when we come here, That's why when we come here, and I want you to see, 
when we come here, here, and please walk with me to discuss the gaps in prior research, you must first highlight some of the prior research in the literature that does not address the particular focus of the research. The contributions should not relate back to the gaps in consistencies and controversies noted earlier. So here, yeah. identify the research gap. Yeah. You will see previous research has addressed several aspects of teenage smoking and 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 uh, cessation and you cite two to three relevant studies and then you give some other two studies two and three cite two or three relevant articles that are talking about this problem but they are not pinpointing they are not getting into your gap Othello, you had, a, you had raised up your hand. Yeah, thank you, Prof. Good evening, everyone, and good evening, Prof. My question yes. relates to our reading. So in uh, some sections of our reading, we see there, we often see in press. And then I've seen very many articles by Sage mm -hmm. say that free print Preprint, they normally uh, they give a disclaimer that this has not been peer reviewed and it will be probably be given to the owners so that they will tell the owners that this is actually ready for publication. Uh, that's a, a suggestion that it can be published. But when we say in press, we may, uh, as, I suppose it's saying that the, the particular research we are looking at or the article we are looking at has been peer reviewed and is on the way in the press. So we don't see any date. We just say in press there is no date because they are not been published. Are we allowed yeah. to mm. make reference to in press articles? Thank you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. In fact, that's that's very impressive for you as a researcher. It means you're working at the frontier of knowledge. <laughs> you are working at the frontier of knowledge. That's what it means. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, do you know RSS? Have you have you been introduced to RSS by the library? RSS, no. Yes, because RSS are articles that will be published in 2025. And they are quoted. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's let's go on. How uh, prof prof um yes. do you mind a, a house cleaning issue? This is Madian. No, 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 don't mind. Yeah, I was wondering if it's possible to make someone else a host because yeah. uh, honestly, we are really getting uh, uh yeah. a wrong hand with the folks who are either not muting or the video is on. Sorry, my voice today is bad. Over to you. If it's oh, possible uh, to let me get into it. I can be the host to reduce the noise. It's, Thank it's you. Okay, much. I will log out and then I come in as a host. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. This work is so important, and yet we are getting so much distraction. I, I I share your frustration. Juliet Otieno. Okay, thank you, Prof. Uh, just a request, based on the example you have given us, that one for the uh, cigarette smoking, eh? with mm. the example one there, when writing up the research gaps, can mm. you, is it okay you can just illustrate for us using that one like a, 
uh, uh, previous research has addressed several aspects, like one to this one, as you cite uh, relevant articles, then uh, part two of it, cite mm. again this one, uh, so that mm. you can now see where it has not been handled, using that uh, for the... Oh, yeah. Is, yeah, in fact, it's because there are too many distractions, but... Um, uh, and let me let me do this. Um, let me stop sharing this. Uh, I I see your concern and I think it's valid. Uh, and uh, please, this this is really too important. So you see, uh, Juliet, I can I can take this if this was my study and I was writing. Uh, this is actually what is here. You see, I can I can pick this study. I can cite Heshman et al. This one as my first study. And what did he talk about? Tobacco use initiation begins at high school. So so I can do this. Let me do this. I can take this as my first citation. This one. And then. What you are asking is this. What you are asking is this. You see, you pick one of those studies. Uh, previous research has addressed several aspects here. So if 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 this was this video, but if this was the let me pick this that tobacco use initiation begins at high school. This one. You cut. So I would say, sorry, I would I would say this this answer here, Juliet. Well, too many. Let me get this out of here, like that. Um. Just a minute. You see this, let me put this here, because that is formatted already. This one, that tobacco use, I can say here, that tobacco use that tobacco use initiation begins as early as junior high school as early as junior high school, like this. Uh, <clears throat> as early as junior high school, like that. This is what I would put here, identify the research gap. Previous research has addressed several aspects of tobacco use and that its initiation begins as early as high school. Then I would put that as my example, and I would uh, quote, cite the person who has just said that in that article here, in that article here. So there are two. There's this one talked about initiation begins at high school. Now I can come back. I can come back. Look here. 
And uh, now take this one. I can come back and uh, take this one. Look here. I can come here and pick on this one. Uh, it says other studies are focused on the prevention of smoking and tobacco use in school. This research has led to numerous school-based intervention programs. So there have been other studies have focused on the prevention of tobacco use in schools, and this has led to school prevention programs and intervention. And these are the people I am going to cite and copy. Are they talking about methodology? No. Are they talking about tobacco use? Yes, in schools. Have I answered your question? Yes, Prof. Thank you so much. Nimelewa. Yeah. Yeah. So Thank that's you. how you would uh, construct that. So let's go, let's go back to this document. And I'm glad I'm not tired to answer questions because if we get this right here, you'll be very delighted with your work yourself as you look at it. You'll be desirous of your work, as we said. So allow us to move a little faster. But again, it's not about moving, it's about understanding. So if you come here, Look at this. I'm, I'm giving you this template and you're going to practice. Uh, so this is the example. Example one. Note, these are the ones I told you. I don't know whether you remember that you will cite a certain number of st studies that relate to the introduction to the background of the problem. These are the ones. Now, example of how to write a research gap. Identify the research gap, example two. However, in addition, this condition encompasses several unexplored dimensions that lately have attracted research attention in other disciplines. So cite two to three relevant articles. You are now moving closer. You are moving closer. Example three, some of these unexplored areas appear to be important and worthy of investigation in the context of teenage tobacco succession. The example we gave about nurses. We now see that some of these unexplored aspects of migration of nurses from third world countries, of job dissatisfaction, appear to be important and worthy of investigation in the context of shortage of nurses in Kenya. An investigation of these issues is important because if this matter is not addressed, we will not attain the health-related SDGs as envisaged in a vision 2030 and uh, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Furthermore, previous empirical research has focused primarily on training of nurses, and very little research has been done on. You are giving me your gap. So example two and three show us 
how to write up a research gap generally. And the beauty of this is that as you identify these gaps, you are paving way to constructing your objectives. Finally, and most important, the researcher must provide a concise statement about the thesis purposes and the contributions made by the thesis to the literature. This statement should follow logically from the text that identifies the gaps in consistencies and controversies in the literature. Purposes and contribution. So what do we intend? In this study, we seek to extend knowledge of the phenomenon you are dealing with by addressing the gaps. The study investigates the impact of four or three aspects. These are now, we are investigating the impact of those those objectives that you teased out. Like for nurses, remember, we are looking at the staffing deficiencies. We are looking at migration. We are looking at job satisfaction. And then we are looking at how there is an interrelationship among those variables. The research identified four major gaps in the prior research and literature. First, the research identified an apparent theoretical gap in the prior research. This one is theoretical gap. And then this one, based on the review of prior research, there is a population gap. Third, the research identified an apparent knowledge gap in the prior research. And you'll practice with this because I'm going to send you this document. Lastly, the researcher identified an empirical gap in the research. This is a, there is a lack of rigorous research in the prior literature. The previous research has focused primarily on this. Very little research has been done on this to properly evaluate the problem. I want you to take time to look at these examples. So in, in, in working out the research gap, please note you are providing alignment between the introduction to the background to the problem you are doing alignment with the problem statement. You are generating objectives that are relevant. And you'll be able to give us a conceptual framework that is very con convincing of the variables that are under, are, are under interplay in your study. So we, we've gone to population gap for you to look at what does it mean we have also gone to all those four actually we do population gap we do um the empirical gap we do the the methodology gap just answer those questions and the knowledge gap and uh, the theoretical gap so go through this to reinforce your understanding I would like to stop there and uh, invite discussion.
Any? Yes, Othello, thank you. Excuse me, Prof. We haven't discussed evidence gap, have we? I was waiting for that because that's number seven. What did I say about it? Can somebody answer Othello? <laughs> it's not common. Prof said it's not very common, so he doesn't want yeah. to task us with it. Yeah, we are prioritizing. We are starting with the population gap. Those are more than adequate. Um, yes. Okay, thank you. Mm. But I thought Prof yes. said that uh, that one is of a higher thinking order. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we already have... <laughs> We we have a, you know we have enough on our plates. Eh? Okay. Any other observation? Oluoch, uh, my are you are you seeing any lights at the end of the tunnel? Are you beginning to? I know we spend a lot of time, but if we don't get this right, we are going to struggle a lot. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, certainly. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, light at the end of the tunnel uh, and with it we are getting quite a kaleidoscope of uh, very interesting stuff um, mm -hmm. thank you so much so far I think I want to go back to the question that my friend uh, Osanya asked and at that time mm -hmm. maybe seemed nearly obvious that mm -hmm. does the gap come before which between the gap and the topic come before Mm -hmm. And as I listen to all of this, whereas I appreciate that the topic may come before, mm -hmm. it seems that someone needs to consider a lot of things before they actually finally come up with their topic per se. Yeah. And might these things be such things as the gaps, you know, as you have articulated them? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, it is true. And and uh, I, I was telling Sanya, uh, we start with the topic, but I don't know that you have, you have heard me before say, the topic will evolve. The topic will be born. Uh, even now in this class, some of you, we are shifting the topics constantly. Why do you think we are shifting the topics constantly? is because we are trying to align the topic to the gap. We are trying to align the topic to the objectives of the study. So a starting point is to, topic just means this is the area of distress. But now, when you start doing what we are calling gap amplification, uh, you are now deepening and teasing out issues from that topic. Yes. So, if you have done adequate literature review, uh, uh, and one of you I'm, I'm already supervising, Desmond is online. We started with Desmond, and uh, he walked to me with a, a concept paper. I don't know where he has kept it, because... He has had, to, I've had to send him so many articles. And every time he reads those articles, I see the influence the articles are having on his topic, on his uh, introduction to the background of the problem, on the statement of the problem. And now we are at the objectives. And the objectives he sent me last week were so amorphous. Uh, and I deliberately have allowed him to to keep reflecting on these objectives, are they coming out of the issues or sub-problems from the problem? So that's this This will remain fluid and dynamic uh, until we shall freeze chapter one and move on to chapter two once, I, and once your supervisors have cleared it. So I agree, yeah. It's very fluid. Some of you, by the way, could easily start, what he's saying is that, can you start with the problem? Can you start with the problem? The answer is yes. Then, then, then uh, you know, cloth 
cloth it to become the topic. That is possible. All right. Can can we allow ourselves to look at some of these case studies? But I'm hoping I'm going to send these uh, case studies back to you. But I'm hoping that uh, many of you are now with a mindset that is telling you I must I must redo this. Uh, introduction to the background of the problem. I must re-examine my topic. I don't like my problem statement. These objectives are not smart. If we are in that state of buoyancy and that state of um, discontent, positively discontent, then you have learned something. Um, All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks for saying that because uh, I think for me, for example, I've been in that state and feeling guilty about it. But it seems yeah. like you're saying it's more refreshing that it is uh, a fluid and buoyant uh, state. Yeah. Thank you. It is. It is. It is. Okay. Uh, Dr. Mwaka, can we have Obadia? You have raised your hand. Yes, yes. Good evening, Prof. Um, um, yeah. I, I have a concern. I think it's kind of similar with a question that I might have asked before. Assuming that um, you as a researcher, you want to do um, uh, you want to do research in um, in a remote area, and meaning remote, uh, I mean that maybe the people that you have to interview or uh, the mm. participant. Uh, they speak an indigenous language, mm. and um, this uh, this maybe this research was um, that was conducted in Machakos County, and now mm. you're taking to Vihiga, mm. uh, the same same topic. Which kind of gap are you looking at? That in terms of language, I'm not saying in terms of locations, but in terms of language, because this is the same um the same topic but um the, the ethnic groups involved are different how do you term that is it is it the language or the culture uh, it includes language and culture yeah it's yeah. cultural it has some cultural implication mm. yeah so what I'm asking um, is, therefore, what what is the gap? What would be the gap here? It would be the empirical gap. Because you're going into primary data. You're collecting primary data against two populations. So it's, it's an empirical gap if you bring in language but if you bring in culture, then it will be a population gap of uh, a population that has been under-researched with reference to what you're going to study there. And, and these are the things I would like you people to, you know, agonize with. Then we are developing the, the kind of research mind that I'm looking for. So, but I, I'm interested in what you've just said and asking myself, language, if a research was done in Machakos or in Burundi and you are bringing it to, to Rift Valley in, in Bomet, Kipsigis, how, how, how would you be looking at the gap in language? Unless you are a linguist who is trying to, to break it down into the different meanings of uh, the phenomenon among those two different uh, ethnic groups. I think culture would be more appropriate uh, where we are, we are looking at a phenomenon within a cultural context. That would, would to me seem appropriate. 
Any other issue before we we run off? Okay, Prof, one more question, please. Yeah. yeah. So when you are talking about the gap, huh, because it has to be in your introduction yeah. part, must I mention that the, uh, I am looking at this gap or it will just come out based on my explanation, the way I do my description? Have you have you remembered what I said when I said that uh, you are not going to talk about the gap per se? You are going to talk about the background and you're going to give us this one to discuss the gaps in prior research you must first highlight some of the prior research in the literature that does not address the particular focus of the research that is very important then you'll bring studies you begin to walk down to the study area and then you will mention what we are calling issues. You not call them gaps. They are called. You will identify the issues as you move down. Like you see, like this person. Let me look at this example three. Some of these Bro. unexplored, whatever, appear to be important and worthy of investigation in the context of a metropolitan setting. And the investigation investigation of these issues is important because of that. So you are you are uh, until you get into the problem statement. In the introduction, you first of all bring us to to congregate around the fireplace. Then you begin to tell us stories that have been said before. But you are not telling us the cultural importance of that fireplace when the father in the home has died. Yeah. I did. Thank you. Prof. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Prof, just allow me to understand better. Mm. So, the sub issues that you were talking about yesterday are what? basically forms the research gap. That, yeah. So those those, those right. are those are the gaps. Those right. are the gaps for your study. Sure. Right? Thank you. But remember, remember, Christopher, those sub issues are sitting under one problem. And I've told you, don't try to, to overload yourself. You'll find a problem and you'll tease out sub-issues. So you'll find a gap. But don't overload yourself trying to do everything there uh, as if, you know, yeah. So you then pull out, tease out. What I would call the, the sub-issues or the sub-problems around which we shall craft the objectives. I know this is difficult, but there's no other way. We cannot escape this until we get it right. All right, uh, Dr. Marker, can we have the first candidate? I want to see how fast I can do some of these things. Yeah. Um, if she's not there, can I sorry. have? Uh, hmm. uh, I no, sorry. To, uh, you uh, you wanted uh, uh, you kindly if you can repeat for me the order of how you'd like them to present. In fact, just don't worry. Just give me the the candidates because so long as they are online. So okay. is Helen Geshchanga online? Yes, Helen. Helen is on. Helen. Is uh, is the key? Did you finish? With that? 
think so. Gakiwi, Gakiwi, I thought we are done with you. I'm here, Prof. Yeah, I did the first presentation. So yesterday I anticipated more of the pruning to be done, but uh, it's fine. I understand the others that have not yet presented. So I'll yeah. wait for okay. the Fine. Okay. The, he, Helen, is Helen around? Yes, Helen. Helen, I've made your co-host so that you can move on. Helen? Helen, if you're are, not... Let me put it in have... this way. We have... Uh, Paul, Helen. No, we have uh, um, the following are, are doing very similar topics. So I'm just going to make comments. Um, as a group, there is uh, Geshanga, mm -hmm. there is Ruth, there yes. is Zipupa, uh, there is. Uh, Francis Ochana. Uh, there is uh, Jenna Subwa, Subwe. Uh, they, they, they are all around leadership and schools and quality. Prof, you forgot about me. There are some who are not in. Ochana is missing. I was trying to. Oh, I'm there's someone who's talking? Yeah, Prof forgot about me. Who are, who is that? Josephine. That is that's a man. Okay, Ruth. I thought we mentioned Josephine. Let me just look for your paper. Um Ruth. Ruth is not in, or China is not in. Um Jane, you are in. Jane? There is uh, Cindy. Oh. Emma. Cindy. Cindy, you are in. There is uh, Brenda Kinney. Brenda is in. Yes, I'm present. Oh, Prof. If I made you a co-host, just means you are actually uh, presenting uh, because your name has been called. Doctor, are you here? Yes. I just I just made it clear that I'm working on a new topic, the growth. So I'll present later. I changed my topic. Yeah, that's fine. But I really want to encourage all of us. You know, the more you change, you really have trust. People have to start focusing so that we don't, you know, right now even getting your work is 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 now uh, tedious because you keep changing and sending so if prof has worked on a topic no, please, i only please. want i changed once dactari i changed once no i'm not talking okay. about you i'm just saying for those who oh, okay. like for example um uh, boas and others if your topic has been worked on now we want to see your chapter one fully developed so don't again bring in something new and and anything that will be Developed completely. Yesterday's people, all your topics were reviewed. So we'd ask you to complete your chapter one from the beginning to the end. You already have the template. So I'm going to make these following comments. And the people just take take note of these comments. Because after, after what we have done the last four days, each one of us should be... I'm not seeing... Uh, Kasamani's paper. And I wanted to see. Just give me a minute. I look for it. Nabe. Moline. Esther Tiano. We did that. Uh, Roda Cheng. Wajia, this one's a dude. Mm. 
Okay. Um, let me let me say the following. Please take note uh, in the interest of time so that you move. From what I've said, I am looking at the topic for Lea Aleo Ongaya. Her topic is evaluating effectiveness of student leadership programs, a case of selected university in Nairobi County. I don't like the word effectiveness in your topic because that is to be researched. So this is an evaluation. My comments here is that this is an evaluation of student leadership training programs, a case of selected universities, not in Nairobi County in Kenya. By the way, there are only 99 universities. So if you go to the, the table for population and sample, 99 is a very small sample. I want you to recast your background in view of what we have discussed the last four days. Your statement, your statement of the problem lacks manifestation, does not define the problem. So I want you to recast your problem statement. For example, in consumerability, you are saying the findings of this study would be beneficial to various stakeholders in the selected universities. We moved away from that. This is not a thesis from that other university where we say it will be beneficial to various stakeholders. I want you to indicate, you see, you're saying the findings of the study will be beneficial to various stakeholders in the selected universities, including faculty members, student, student affairs professionals, and university administrators. How will they partake of your findings? So the, the consumerability must be specific to the audience. Now, I looked at your objectives and there is no alignment between your objectives and your background. For example, you say objective this, of the study is to identify the benefits from this training, to determine the strength of the training, to identify areas of improvement, to establish improvement strategies. This is not visible in your introduction to the background of the problem. And that's why these objectives are not aligned to your problem statement. They are not aligned to your background, the introduction to the background of the problem. So remember, we have changed the topic and evaluation of student leadership training programs, a case of selected universities in Kenya. Uh, Josephine Sylvia Kassaman. Oh. Effects of... Sorry for effects... Me. Yes? Can I just say something? Uh, thank you for the corrections. And uh, yesterday and, and the other days, I was, you've been correcting my colleagues. I've also been working out on my, on my project. And I really yeah. appreciate your corrections. And I'm really going to work out something on it and make mm. improvements so that I come out with something so great. Thank you so much. Okay. The, the awareness. But let me... It's important I point out this because uh, I've spent time looking at it. Uh, Josephine Kasamani, Kasam effects of learning 
resources. I have a wrong paper. No? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have, I have this one of effects of learning resources to comprehensive CBC schools in Sabatia County. These challenges are facing okay. assessments. Yes. What do you mean? Challenges facing assessments. Okay, there's several challenges. So can you can you change? Um. Uh, and I, I don't have that paper, so it would be superfluous for me to try and give you any input, but I would just I would say assessments in junior secondary schools in the CBC curriculum in Kenya challenges. Full column challenges. But I wouldn't even put challenges. I would just say assessments in junior secondary schools in the CBC curriculum in Kenya. And when I go and do this study, it should be reflected in my background and in my problem statement. what these challenges are. So knock off that so that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Uh, I would have to look at uh, that paper. So we send it to Magdalene. I want to look at it, okay? Okay, But Thank the topic, the topic goes, let me see the objectives. Let me just look at the objectives. Let me look at the objectives. You're moving too fast. Look at that. Look at those objectives. Are they aligned to the background of the problem? Identify specific challenges encountered in the implementation of assessments. What is it about assessments? What are we looking for? Okay. And and and, uh, and when you say in the implementation of assessments, what do you mean? Okay, to me, the challenges facing assessment that have not been uh, okay. You you are among some of the people um quoting, and uh, you identified some of these challenges. But yeah. there are some some of the challenges that have not been discussed. So that is what I want to identify in my research. No, but you're not getting my point. Oh. Please don't, uh, you're, you're not getting my point. My point is, mm -hmm. identify challenges encountered in the implementation of assessments. Are the challenges... in the assessment themselves or in the implementation? The challenges are in the assessment. And not in the implementation. Now through the, through uh, maybe encountering or trying to solve that issue, that is how you'll be implementing the assessment. Yeah, I, I think, uh, Let me go through the paper so that okay. I can link your objectives to the problem statement and to the background. Okay. Yeah, so let me have it. Um, can we go to... The next person uh, on my list here... Helen... Jen, 
Helen? Sarah, eh? Is it Helen? Hello. No, I have Sarah Angachi here. Sarah, you are you are on. Sarah. Okay. Sarah, yes, yes. You you you, you want to say something? Sarah, you can go ahead. You have lifted your hand. Sarah, do you want are to say something or you just are you lifted still your hand? Anyway, uh, can, you can, I, can I have uh, um, Cindy Emma? Cindy is the one who said she has uh, requested her topic. Oh, she has requested, okay. Sarah Angachi is not saying anything. Sarah is saying, um, um, Sarah, nobody has unmute yourself. Nobody has muted. Everybody can unmute themselves. In fact, I even have made you a co-host. So you just click on unmute. Oh, okay, I'm muted. I'm muted. Okay. I changed my topic, Prof. To what? I changed to head teachers instructional leadership practices and teachers' work performance in public primary schools. Um. Okay, so you ran away from adaptive leadership. Yes. You can repeat what you what did you change it to? No, they, they also have miles apart. I have to read the paper. Okay. It would be very superficial for me to try and do anything there. Ochami, okay. have you finished with you? Ochami? Francis Ochami. Hello, Prof. Yes, Prof. We had finished you? on the topic. We had found out for your topic, isn't it? Yes, we had. Okay, very good. And this is about, uh, I, I, if I remember, was this about banks? Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, okay, good. Uh, Paula Mata. Yes, Prof. We had finished. No, we had no, we we haven't gone through it. Yeah, can uh, is this the one of beyond accessibility ramps? Yeah, but we changed. Uh, we removed uh, the beyond accessibility. We we, we removed the yeah. uh, beyond ramps. Yeah. Yes. And so our topic is. Uh, our topic is. Uh, Appraising the lived experiences of mobility impaired students in selected Kenyan private yeah. universities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is this is about uh, aspects of inclusiveness. Can you read me your objectives? Just a minute. Read me your objectives. I just want to affirm them. Uh, yes, objective one. Determine the existing infrastructure and living experiences of students in the institutions of higher learning. Objective two. Evaluate. You see. Yes. Determine the existing infrastructure and living experiences. Mm -hmm. How are you going to tag those together? Because then these are supposed to be separate objectives. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, number two. Evaluate the effectiveness of existing infrastructure measures and living environment of mobility impaired students in private universities. Hmm. 
effectiveness. Yes. Existing infrastructure effectiveness uh, of effective existing infrastructure measures. Yes. What do you mean infrastructure measures? Uh, I mean the infrastructure in terms of uh, build environment and uh, in, uh, for example um, uh, ramps, exit, doors, uh, facilities like uh, so are you if there are doors and what do you mean if how would then how would you then evaluate the effectiveness? I thought you are going to evaluate the functionality. Exactly. That's uh, that's the power okay. I was looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next. Determine societal barriers, including uh faculty and staff and even peers. Societal barriers. Yes. What are these? Uh, are these? Um, are you talking of stigma? What are you talking about? Uh, I, 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 uh, I think uh, it's about inclusiveness and uh, how they are being. Uh, uh, how they relate with other people in the in, within that environment, this mobility impaired student. Mm. So, if it's inclusiveness, what are the terms you have read? I don't think you're using the literature uh, language register around inclusiveness. That's why I'm struggling. Okay. So, can you check on the language? the right language register yes when we are dealing with matters inclusiveness okay and and i don't know I, are you talking about i was just wondering are you talking about uh, uh structural modification challenges i don't know i'm just i i i keep saying are we have we really linked our background, our introduction to the background of the problem? You know, there's structural adjustment. Eh? Yes. In, in, in universities, if you want. Yes. Yeah, and uh, this, this work right somewhere would be based on the, would be grounded on the social model of disability. Yes. That's the theory, social model of disability. Yes. Um, so I, if I were you, I'd be looking at the, I, I would evaluate of the level of uh, I'd, be, I'd, I'd be looking at uh, instead of saying determine the existing infrastructure yes. and living experience I'd be looking at uh, the modified physical resources in the universities which encompasses what you are saying in number one mm -hmm. modified I would be looking at modified physical resources. Okay. Yeah. Yes, because uh, if you look at our topic, we are talking about appraising the lived experiences. So uh, to allow for mo for mobility. So the modified physical resources. Yeah. Yes. I would also be looking at uh, the one you are saying to evaluate. Where are you talking about? Uh, Social barriers or whatever. Societal barriers. At, yeah, the the attitude towards the attitude towards
students It was mobility impaired students, eh? the attitude. Eh? Yes. Yeah, and, th and this can cover those societal barriers you're talking about. Let's use a word like attitude. Yes. How about, how about, I thought one of the issues would be lack of teacher skills on special needs education. Have we, where have we captured that? Yes, we haven't. So that, so that we are making the, our objectives sharp. I don't know whether you're getting me. I'm getting your problem. Yes. Uh, and then suggestions. My last objective will be suggestions on minimizing inclusive education challenges. At yes, universities. Both. Yeah. So you say, you see, you're saying to propose possible measures to mitigate. I'm, I'm saying suggestions on minimizing yes. inclusive education challenges, right? Yes, Prof. And I've given you I've given you the theory. Yes, social mobility theory. Yeah, go and go and read that theory extensively. And you'll yes. find most of these things I'm talking to you about are in that theory. Yes. So I I I think that way uh, we will be very close to uh, Paul Amato. We'll be very close to uh, yes, filling in the, the the knowledge gap from a a, pra a practical point of view. Yes, Prof. Yeah. So I I want you to do do me a write up on the social model theory. Yes. And let me clear it. For your chapter one. Thank you. I'll do that. All right. Okay. Very good. Um next okay, appreciated talk. Yeah, uh, it's okay. Next is uh Obadia. Obadia, are you there? Yes, prof. Mm. Read us your topic. Uh um... Second. My topic is career decision making among high school graduates in uh, Bukavu, in, in South Kivu, influencing factors. Mm -hmm. Count the number of words. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm, at least ten. It's Somebody career decision in. making among high school graduates in South or in Sid Kivu influencing factors. So this is uh, you have removed uh, exploring. Eh? Yes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You removed. You now have the old paper. You removed understanding, influencing factors, and decision making. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So tell me about your topic. Yeah, um now my my topic is um is um trying to uh create some a form of understanding on an issue that I've taken very personal because uh, it's an, something that I've been observing around. What is this issue? I've seen many young people struggling with whatever they're doing in campus, struggling with mm. uh, the courses that they've chosen. I've seen some of them dropping out and switching or swapping from one career to another. Mm -hmm. I've also seen um, uh, people of my age 
struggling with what to do after after their campus because mm. uh, most of them don't like really what they did in campus. For instance, I have more than 12 people around me who mm. did what we call here in French agronomy, which is related to agriculture. But yeah. all of these people right now, they are mm. selling in shops not because they want to be where they are at the moment, but mm. because after graduating, they mm. knew not, it's like they knew nothing about what they are doing in, in, in school. It's like someone just told them, there is a career, uh, um, you can just pursue this course and uh, in the end, maybe get, get a degree or that, but they do not know, they don't understand what it's all about and where uh, maybe uh, a graduate from this field should be. So uh, uh, having, having that in mind, I thought that uh, why, why can't I look at um, uh, some, of these, um, some of these influencing factors uh, that, lead, um, that lead young people in um, Sitkiv or in Bukavu particularly to make um, uh, career decisions because I've talked also to several, some of them, right now I'm in Bukavu, I've talked to some of them, they know nothing about careers. Like they are blank, their minds are blank. Looking at some factors in schools, we don't have, uh, we don't have um, career counseling sessions. Some of schools don't have counselors. You're asking them about careers, they don't know how many careers or what do you mean by careers. So I said now, maybe I should take a challenge to look at, um, at uh, the influencing factors and see if I would be in a position to make some suggestions to uh, some of um, uh, these, uh, these institutions or why not bringing it to a public, uh, to a public domain and uh, maybe uh, have a talk with uh, the Minister of Education and tell them I've seen my young people of my age struggling not mm. knowing what to do because we don't have uh, they don't they are not informed about uh, career mm. choices uh, then mm. they don't know various careers that exist so that um, we may be able uh, to look around that maybe and create some programs that will help young people and even those who are still struggling right now in universities uh, in, I mean at university level so that you may be able to help them to understand, to make them understand them themselves and um, make them understand how maybe one would link a few dots in order to, uh, to, choose, a, to choose a career. Yeah, I, I, and I hear what you're saying, but um, just run to your objectives. Run to your objectives, and that's where we 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 don't agree. Look at your objectives. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at your objectives. Investigate the social cultural factors influencing career aspirations and decision making among high school. That's not a smart objective. There are so many things you want to do there. Uh -huh. Number two, examine the role of education opportunities and resources in shaping career pathways and aspirations, as well as to assess the impact of education experiences. Uh, too many uh, constructs there. Explore the impact of economic constraints, familial expectations. I think these are supposed to be family expectations and societal norms on career. Impact, how do you explore the impact of economic constraints? Uh, uh, so you see, um, these objectives are, are offside because we have not done what I've been trying to bring up for the last three days. 
and that is uh, gap amplification in your introduction to the background of the problem. And then coming to the context of your problem statement and beginning to say, these are the studies that have, have been done, but nothing has been done around this area. And then you ask yourself, now, if this is the gap, what are the issues sitting in this gap? So these ones will all need to be recast. There's also something I wanted to, to, to note. Just give me a minute. I'm looking, I'd write, written somewhere. Um, I, I would like to send you some two articles to read. There's a very similar study that has been done that I would like you to look at. And uh, that, in fact, I, I don't even have to send it. I think uh, it is it is written very similar. But instead of what you've done, it is if you can write this down, it says factors influencing mm -hmm. students' yeah. career choices uh -huh. among, now you add, uh -huh. factors influencing students' career choices among high school graduates in uh, Sudi Kivu. But the one I'm going to send you is a study that was done in Kisumu municipality. And that should help you, yeah. Uh, factors influencing, uh, that should really help you to, to conceptualize what, what you are looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because this is this area, this this topic, uh, Badia is researchable, but we've got to give it the intensity of uh, research that will now make it researchable. Yeah. So okay. so these factors influencing. I'm just mm -hmm. now. I'm, I'm getting into the into the gaps into the issues will include peer influence uh -huh. yeah yes gender mm -hmm. parental influence mm -hmm. job opportunities mm -hmm. are they there or are they not yeah yes they are not yeah job opportunities and personal interest So if I were you, we would be actually we would actually be looking at those aspects. Yeah, that that means that uh, my objective should be formulated around them. Yeah, around them, and those are very sharp objectives, huh? Very sharp and uh, smart objectives, and we should be able to collect our data, right? Are you satisfied? Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, I, I have I have a question. I want to anticipate ahead, something that I don't want mm. to catch me by surprise. Mm. Now, based on uh, based on uh, our, our our education system. Mm. Um, one a student chooses their path 
mm. when uh, they start their form uh, form form three. Mm. If you want to be a teacher, then now you will do what we call pedagogy, the general pedagogy. Mm. If you want to venture in science, you can do the math, chem, you can do physics or biology and all those related uh, related mm. subjects. Now, my question is this, when I will be collecting data, mm. where will, uh, would you advise me to um, uh, to focus on uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the level of uh, the level of maturity and also understanding uh, do i do i go and collect data do i collect data from the freshers or from the people who i mean from uh, uh, the students who have just graduated and they haven't made any step to their further further education yeah, these are high school. So you capture them when they have just finished. But also, you will put it as part of your delimitation. Obadiah, you will tell us this is this these are the respondents in this in this study. Either those who finished over the last two years or three years, and then you are uh, within the questionnaire. You'll you'll find out when did you finish school and then you'll be able to discuss them. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So can you try and recraft that topic and let me look at it? I'll be interested. Okay, thank you. Okay, very good. Um, I can see Faith and Zuki. Yes, Prof. Mm. Okay, we changed my topic, and today I was mm. trying to re go back and try to get what I'm going to write about it, and I was much more puzzled. I even don't know what to do, because we're talking about le leadership approaches in selected high schools in Kenya. Then you told me I'm going to look at the top high schools in every county. That also confused me, because I was wondering if it is approaches how am I going to collect the data? Because maybe I have to do some interviews on how I'm going to reach these, maybe the principles of the schools and such. And then mm. we dropped completely on the school wellness. Am I still going to talk about the leadership styles or where am I venturing in? Mm. I don't I, I really I can't get there until I see your topic and the background. Are they singing okay. to each other? Uh, secondly, mm -hmm. secondly, I want you people to avoid this amorphous word called leadership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you must be very careful, particularly uh, in uh, school leadership. What leadership are you talking about? Because if you just use the word leadership, it is the it is so wide. Uh, I don't know what you're chasing in the study. Uh, but um, school wellness, we can decide on aspects that we want to study. We don't have to study everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can look at uh, participation in extracurricular activities. We can look at the discipline in the school. We can look at uh, spirituality if we want. Those are school wellness. We can look at the relationship between the students and the teachers. You know, we don't even mm -hmm. have to talk about results. Okay. Somebody else can do that study, yeah. But uh, okay. I want us to be very careful. I want us to be very careful mm -hmm. in talking about even even Ruth. She talked of leadership, and I've told her she has to stick to instructional leadership. Because uh, you if you're talking you about... I've told her to stick to instructional leadership and recast her paper totally, because uh, leadership is amorphous. Sounds okay. nice. Yeah. 
so I can All still right. redo this, uh, redo it, and then I give it back to you so that you clear with the background. Is. Okay. Yeah, and and uh, all of you don't don't feel like you are you are uh, burdening me. No, I'm I'm the only one who look at this chapter one, so okay. I am prepared, I'm prepared. When I'm out of the country, I will allow you now to send to Magdalene. She will send me soft coffees. I will uh, I'll I'll track the changes and send them back to you. Thank you so much, Prof. Okay, bye bye. Yeah. Yeah, bad. Yeah, bad. Bad, bad. Mm. Maybe uh, I think we finish at nine. Eh? Osanya? Yes, Prof. I wanted to confirm if my draft was received from your end. Something on emotional no. intelligence. No. I have not received that. Uh, it's what I was. I, when I saw you lift your hand, I was looking. I have not received it. I uh, sent it yesterday let me, let me, in the morning. Okay, they haven't given me. Yes. Can I? Is um, Elizabeth Muthoni on, online? You can look at your, your topic. Elizabeth, are you there? Hello, Prof. I changed that one. I'm still working on another okay. one. I'm yet to change. Okay. I am yet to finish and send. That's that's fine. No, no problem. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, we have Vivian Kimavi. Are you are you okay with the topic? V Vivian is is Vivian here, yeah, unless she's using a different. Yeah, but uh, Vivian. I, I was going to be very brutal with her because she is uh, she's very efficient but not effective. Uh, so, for example, her problem statement is: despite efforts to promote gender equality in education, there continues to be a gap in mathematical achievement between boys and girls. The statement of the problem addresses the need to better understand why the gap exists and what factors contribute to girls' performance. Full stop. Yeah. So that sounds that sounds very efficient. Uh, Teresa, Monica Wakodi? Teresa didn't present yesterday. Teresa, did you? You did present yesterday, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did uh, on Saturday. We did, we did. Yeah. Um, oh, we've done quite a bit. Sindani, have I looked at your topic? Who is that, Prof? You can. Hmm? Sindani? Mesha. 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 Uh, Brenda, Akini, Tatiana. Yes, Prof. I'm here. Have you fallen? Maybe it's fallen. Is that Sindani? That yeah. is Delilah. No, this is Brenda. Uh, Brenda, Akini. Yeah. Brenda, did we look at your topic? Yes, we looked at um, my topic. There wasn't much changes except for yeah. mission of word Nairobi. So I changed it to a policy making and implementation, a case study of uh, competency-based mm. curriculum in Kenya. Yeah. So you're working on it, huh? Yeah. Good. Excuse me, Prof. Um, yes? So maybe, Prof, maybe we uh, might I also... I think, my, I think my, I think my uh, document, I don't know if you have received my, I sent it on Thursday. Othello, I've not received your work, and that's uh, I was going to quarrel you. I haven't received your, your work. I sent it on Thursday, imagine. Yeah, I'll find out. Uh, uh, Dr. Mwaka, take note of that so that. Uh... Uh, Prof, what I'm going to do is uh, we will create a list of now cleared topics so that uh, they yeah. will they will get their supervisor to start off. You know, if you delay, you'll also delay in supervision as well as much as you're going through. So we're going to have those cleared 
And then those ones that have been reviewed and sent to Magda and may not be with you, and the ones that have not sent. So we're going to have three categories. Then now mm. we have also that we can be able to track everybody. We don't have yeah. to repeat their names. So I will create, I'm going to create on their WhatsApp a list. If your topic has been mm. cleared, you write. And then if the ones that have been taught to review, they will list down their names. And then the mm. ones who have not submitted at all, we shall, so that uh, it gives Magda also an easy work because there's a lot of repetition, either sending or resending a lot of times yeah. until she loses track on printing this information. It's true. It's true. So we will, uh, we will uh, do that. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to pause there. I'm hoping that uh, the emphasis I've put on uh, gap amplification, the introduction to the background of the problem, the problem statement and objectives will bear fruit when I see your chapters. I want to challenge all of you because I have covered all aspects of chapter one. All aspects. The only thing I've not done, I think, is uh, operational definitions. But those you can find out. They're not just the terms in your variable. You will uh, tell me what they mean and who is the authority. Can I see some chapter ones? Can I see some chapter ones? And it doesn't matter... I'm using the word awful because it's in my book. It's not, I don't mean you are awful. I'm just saying, can I see that chapter one the way it is? Running from the introduction to the background of the problem, right through to the conceptual framework. Can I see some of you dare that? And just send it, send it uh, to Magdalene. She will send it to me when I'm uh in my room uh, i'll be able to at uh, this time i'll be doing I'll, I'll i'll correct it online just giving you comments and you get it back you start working uh in the course of the week uh not this week next week we shall start with the literature review uh because i've noticed if 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 i if i don't have a morning assignment if i wake up at around uh, four, five in the morning. Uh, in Kenya, that will be in the afternoon. Uh, so I'll see how far we can move towards five, but from four o'clock, even if you're in the office, you can take your class on literature review so that we do chapter two. And then chapter three, we'll have to wait until I come. But I want to finish chapter two while I'm away as much as possible. Gaki and Sipora. Thank you so much, Pro, for the sacrifice and uh, even the concern, because it's not just uh, having taught us, but also taking your time to give us the feedback that is required. This is quite mm -hmm. something that I'm grateful for. Now, uh, back to the work that we had shared about our thesis so far. I know Dr. Marka has talked about uh, giving the list and all that. Could we also get feedback from you in terms of our chapter one, what was okay, what needs to be adjusted and all that, even probably because of, uh, even as we get cleared to move on to the next bit, we'd appreciate your feedback on the work submitted. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. You are the one doing special inclusive, no, yeah, dementia? Yeah, yeah dementia, it's an inclusive learning. Yes, a dyslexia, yes, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Thank you. Sipora? Good evening, Prof. Good evening. Mine is just, I done most of the parts of chapter one, but I realized that from the correction, you from the lessons you've been teaching us, I realized that there are some errors. So I don't know if I can redo it or re you just go through the one I sent yesterday so that I can move on. No, I would like to ask everybody, after all that we have done, and uh, I've had, I think, almost three quarters of you 
I have looked at your work. Can we just start reconstructing chapter one? Yes, and don't worry about just just <laughs> just reconstruct it based on what we have given you and the notes. I'm sending these other notes tonight on the gap. How you're going to construct the gap for your, the first part and also in the problem statement. Thank you. And by the way, by the way, that's why you are doing. We are we are tuning you to think at another level, to enter the caves dark caves like the ones in Mount Elgon and you're going to meet lions there not lions and elephants and you have to dodge them you must learn to run with the bulls that they don't stample you down that's what it is and uh, we are there to shepherd you particularly since I've taken it my responsibility to make sure that we give you a proposal uh, we will look at it, definitely. Yeah. So that's that's my advice, and that that will make us move. Sibora, uh, Sasa. Prof. Thank you, Prof. Yeah. Jimmy Sanya. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Good evening. To you. I want to join my colleagues in appreciating the efforts that you people are. That is you, Prof, and uh, that Tari, are you actually putting to ensure that uh, it is all well on our side? So I must mm -hmm. say that uh, may God bless you. Uh, I want to join yeah. one of my colleagues that has earlier uh, talked about the the feedback from you, and they're having mm -hmm. being one of the students that has actually submitted some sort of uh, chapter one. I will appreciate mm. so much in case uh, that particular feedback, the particular comments that you've actually made on that particular soft copies, yeah. if I'll be able to Thank get you. them, I think it will be very, okay. very much important on my side to as I work on chapter one. Okay. Thank you, Prof. So, yeah. Frank, uh, Jimmy, that's okay. Frank? Good, good evening, Professor. Good evening, good evening. I would want just to appreciate for the tireless work that you are doing. I'm really grateful for what you are doing to us and I appreciate everything that you are doing. Uh, I'm really sorry that I was uh, off. It is due to power in my place, but I would yeah. really request that uh, if you if you just do the, you go through my work, then at least you send it because uh, my work has, has not been reviewed so that okay. at least I know where I'm going to start from. But please, uh, Dr. Marker, take those notes. Yeah, those are genuine concerns. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Juliet Otieno? Okay, thank you so much, Prof, for your time. I think it has been a great sacrifice since... Uh, Friday, just taking us through these classes. And I must mm. admit, I have learned a lot. Initially, I was so much afraid. How, how was I going to go about it? And it was not really working out. But since mm. uh, Friday, I have not reached there, but there is much that I have gathered. And thank you so much for your time and your sacrifice. The only question mm. I have, Prof, is I initially had shared a topic and uh, you advised me to uh, to do to rename it like teacher preparedness in junior secondary schools in Kenya. And mm. I've been trying to see around, looking around what it means to be uh, about teacher preparedness and so on. So may, uh, the question that I had, just I just need help so that I can get some uh, step how to go about it. What are some mm. of the things I need to look on when I'm talking about teachers teacher preparedness in GSS? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I think this is mainly pedagogy uh, and then appropriateness of the curriculum. Some of you people are teaching subjects you have no idea about. You are not trained in those subjects. And then the pedagogical approach to CBC is very different. Uh, what I will do, just send me a line on my email. I'll send you... 
uh, my evaluation of the pilot CBC and uh, why I emphasize that uh, the teachers in the classrooms are not prepared to deliver that type of a curriculum because they were trained differently. So I can I can send you some notes to help you there. So the topic is okay. I just uh, yeah, go with keep, it like let's that. Let's keep the topic. Let's okay. keep the topic. And there's too much material around it. Huh? Okay. I'll even I can even send you some material from South Africa. Uh, the struggles they have had with CBC there. Yeah. Thank you so much, bro. God bless you. Okay. All right. Uh, Anne Kenyaru. Good evening, Prof. Good evening. Thank you so much for taking us daily through throughout these lessons. I've been able to mm -hmm. make a bit of progress. My topic was about teachers' perspectives on the impact of the Tusome reading program mm -hmm. in the upper mm -hmm. primary. And yesterday, mm -hmm. there's something that you said about anchoring our, everything that we are doing around leadership and policy. Mm -hmm. I was now I'm wondering how do I connect this topic of teachers' perspectives with the policy issues? I've been thinking oh, yeah. about it. I'm stuck. Yeah. <laughs> no. See, just Google to some policy guidelines. To uh -huh. some okay. succeeded, succeeded because the Americans religiously implemented the program based on the policy guidelines. Okay. So you see, first of all, they had enough funds. Mm -hmm. That is policy. And remember, teachers were being paid by M-Pesa for attending workshops. Yes. Uh, to some uh, uh, policy around instructional materials, they actually printed books in India, which was much cheaper. There was... They were getting books at thirty percent the price in Kenya. That's okay. that's that's leadership and governance. I, I'll send you, uh, but also I'll give you somebody to supervise you, uh, Carol. Put the Evelyn Jepkeme uh, because she's 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 to some itself. Yeah, and uh, uh, we'll ask her. To, we'll they, ask her to guide. They did and, at RIT. Yeah. RTI. Yeah. Yeah, you see that? Uh, you see that? There is so much. Uh, that's why I told you you are very lucky. You have chosen a very good area. Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when writing the background, do I write about those policy issues? Yeah. Yeah, or at what your, point? At what point uh, do uh, I include the policy? One one of your objectives has to be around there. Oh, I get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it has to be. So, okay. Uh, thank Muku you. Ngunzi, uh, you're welcome. Muku Ngunzi. Brenda Kini. Uh, good evening once again. Yeah, good evening. So um, I was actually hoping uh, for a critique from your end because I tried and drafted my chapter one on uh, um, policy making and implementation, a case of competency-based curriculum in Kenya. So maybe if you get time as you move on, probably you could uh, look at it as I keep on restructuring it and uh, just trying to to implement okay. every every bit of uh, everything that you've said in the in the sessions. Yeah, uh, I will look at it, huh? Brenda King. Yeah? yeah, you know some of these documents I don't have them. That's why I'm not mentioning. But I thought I saw Brenda King somewhere. Yeah, you actually called my name among us the first that I think. Uh, okay. All right, yeah. I think it's yeah. just time. Okay. okay. So, uh, Dr. Mwaka, please take note of that. Yeah, I think once we get organized on who has been cleared, whose review, then it, it will make it easier and I'll be posting on how they can. Yeah, but, but it has to be, it has to be immediate. Eh? 
because we want yeah, these people to we have, we have just started on your marks get set so we don't want some left behind all right Hello, Bob. and brenda you know uh you didn't send me any objectives did you Brenda, hello? So. Yes, yes, you I'm here. My, me... my internet is fluctuating, yes? You didn't send me any objectives. You you had I background. Did. No, I did. You had back... The paper I have. Yeah. Is this the, is this the second one or the first one? No, the, I you think you have the first one. Is there a possibility of a bit of mix-up because of the... I think once we be a bit organized, we will be able to get a clear picture. I think there's a bit of... Okay. And I can All understand right. where Magdalene is, was coming from. Because the paper I have, Brenda, does not have... It has background, then objective. Mm -hmm. The primary that, objective that is... To... The very first one before we even looked oh, at yeah. the topic. Yeah. Okay. But I sent my chapter one last week okay. and last week. Yeah. I think the holiday also caused disruptions. Huh? Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, finally, Prof. Judy Maina. Judy I was Maina. Signed, I was signed to talk before Brenda, Prof. Okay. okay. Muku. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Yeah. So the last time I submitted my topic, uh, mm. you told me to restructure my topic. I later submitted my my reviewed topic, but I've been waiting for a feedback for me to okay. go on uh, with uh, with my chapter one. Okay. I don't know if you can I've listen not to my... It. I've just... not received it. Just submit it. Eh? Yeah. Just, uh, Mwaka will, will get back to me through my secretariat. And I will send you my feedback online. I promise okay. that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, don't panic here. Yeah. Uh, Judy Maina, the last person. Good evening, Prof. Good evening. Just to underscore that we appreciate you very much for your time and effort with us. We are thank grateful. You. And uh, mine is a humble request. I noticed together with Juliet, we have some similarity in our study on pedagogy. And I humbly request if could, I don't know if you will send us both that content on the piloting, dealing with pedagogy okay. and South okay. Africa, yes. Okay, all right. Please take Thank note, you. Secretariat. Thank mm. you. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, continue working hard. Uh, if you miss some of my classes, my colleagues will step in. But I promise I will uh, try my best to 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 play my part uh, until we get you across with your proposals. Uh, good night and God bless. So, Prof, uh, your next class might, most likely is next week. Next week, yeah. Next week. Because of the tra the traveling, yeah. But I'll see. I'll be in touch with you. Once I see I have some time on my own, of my own, I will uh, want the class assembled. So all I plead is for the class to sacrifice a bit. Some Sometimes these classes might start, let's say, at four or five, uh, thereabout. Because later... Than that, it means I'm in meetings. I'm out of the hotel. So I might have to start them earlier. Uh, but we'll try to see what to do. Thank you very much. And, uh, we have a weekend to work uh, on it. Pro, pro, before you leave, when, if it is at five, that would be at one o'clock in Kenya. <laughs> Prof has already left. <laughs> that would be at one o'clock in Kenya. So No, don't yeah. worry. Don't worry. Yeah. So you guys have a good